Hello. Today I am going to talk about why the costumes of The Greatest Showman are great and how it's just an amazing movie overall and in general. Now I used a lot of absolutes just then and that's not entirely accurate because everyone can have their own opinion. Some people don't like the costumes or this movie at all while other people adore it. And believe it or not, I've actually been in both of these groups. The first time I went and saw this movie, I did not like it at all because I went in with expectations. I knew it was a musical, but I was expecting it to be much more like musical theater. And so I was taken aback and surprised and not super happy when it was just a bunch of like pop music. And also I thought it was gonna be more like a historically set movie because I knew it was based on an actual person. And so I was expecting it to be more historically accurate. So when the costumes and various other things weren't, I was a little disappointed. So I've been there. I know that feeling. I, that was me. But after more analyzing of it and just watching it and listening to it, I have come to appreciate the decisions that were behind the costumes and the general movie of The Greatest Showman. And I want to share those with you today. So The Greatest Showman nails two concepts that are very important to me when it comes to any movie in general, which are consistency and context. So let's dive into those and talk about what I mean by that. So for me, for some reason, consistency is really important in every regard in a movie when it comes to pacing, tone, costumes, lighting, directing, acting, everything. Consistency really impresses me when it's done right. To give you an example of what I mean, I will <laughs> talk about one that does not work, so you understand what I'm saying, which is the Beauty and the Beast remake. I'm pretty hard on this movie and one of the things that I just cannot stand is how her ball dress does not match the rest of the movie. This world is obviously mid 18th century France and that is displayed in all of the costumes and in a lot of the architecture, everything else. But Belle's ball dress just sticks out and it is so modern and it is just confusing and distracting where it's just like, where did that come from? So that is an example of not being consistent when it comes to costumes. And so I am impressed that with The Greatest Showman, they made a decision and then they stuck with it where it wasn't going to be completely accurately set in a specific time period or, you know, over decades or whatever. It's like they chose to be a lot more flexible in their designs and not staying true to like a specific time period or what Bernadette Banner would call it was a design choice. They acknowledged the history, then they turned the other way and started walking. It's meant to be something artistic, something fantasy. So we don't want to take points off for deliberately not being historical where they weren't trying to be historical in the first place. There's obviously a lot of modern influence. Like there's a lot more spandex in this movie than there ever was in the 1800s. They were not going for a perfectly historically accurate aesthetic. but. It's consistent through the whole movie and with all the characters, so it works and it feels cohesive. I love it when movies can have consistency, and I feel like The Greatest Showman did that very well. Next, I want to talk about context. And I'm actually gonna talk about this for a little bit longer because it comes into play in two different ways in this movie. The first is that this is a musical. Now, unfortunate as it is, people do not usually burst out into song and dance in real life, unfortunately. So when we are watching a musical, we understand this is not reality, like this is fantasy. And musicals often come in three forms, which is in the theater, on stage, in movies in animated form, and then live action movies as well. And when it comes to animated movies and the theater, they have a little bit of help to begin with because we, the audience, are already suspending our disbelief because we know what we're watching isn't real. That's a person on a stage wearing a costume. We're already telling our imagination to do work and along with animation as well. So when you are doing a live action movie, it's a lot harder to convince your audience just, you know, subconsciously to believe that these people are singing and dancing in reality. And that's one reason I actually think that the live action Les Miserables movie and the Cats movie struggled is because they tried to make them realistic and like really ground them in reality. 
and I think that really hindered what they were going for because you're trying to make it realistic when people don't actually sing and dance in real life and so it really fought itself and made it really hard to believe. So what I like about the decision they made for The Greatest Showman is they did not try to ground it in reality. They put us in a place that our minds automatically went to knowing like, okay, this isn't real, this is kind of a fantasy or alternative, you know, world where everyone are dressed in things that we really think more of as costumes. And so when they start singing and dancing, it feels very natural and fits into a musical setting. And so that is one way where context, I think, plays a big part. They understood it was going to be easier for us to suspend our disbelief if they made it a little bit more costumey and not so historic. The second point that I want to make about context is just pointing out who this movie is based on, P.T. Barnum. There are a lot of um, movies that are based on historical figures that it makes sense to make it as accurate as possible to those people because you wanted to see what their life was actually like and how they affected the world around them and whatever and so you want it to be as historically accurate as possible when depicting that historical figure. But in the case of P.T. Barnum, I don't think that's the case. If you know anything about the life of P.T. Barnum and his association with the circus and his museum and all that jazz, he was big into deception and just making sure that his audience and his guests had a good time. That's what he was all about, is he would oftentimes have displays or people where he would fudge the truth a little bit, and they do that in the movie too, where it's like they find this really tall guy and then they put him on stilts, you know, and they find like this really large guy and then they stuff his shirt. So, and P.T. Barnum did that in real life in his museum. Like you can go and see like he had a mermaid the, he just put a monkey and a fish together and called it a mermaid and put it in his museum. He was all about just entertaining people and making sure that they had a good time. And so I think for this movie to not concentrate on being historically accurate, but instead focus on entertaining the audience was more important than making sure that it was, you know, exactly historically accurate to P.T. Barnum's life. And I actually have something to back me up on this. The director of the Barnum Museum said that she thinks that P.T. Barnum would have enjoyed the movie The Greatest Showman. I'll include a clip in here and then the link in the description down below. Barnum's also known for humbug. Um, it's a word that actually means something a little different today than it did during Barnum's time. But Barnum's definition of humbug is management, tact to take an old truth and put it in an attractive form. And wonderfully, that's precisely what The Greatest Showman did. It took Barnum's story, but made it interesting and exciting and relevant for audiences today. That is precisely what P.T. Barnum would have done. They took 50 years or more of P.T. Barnum's life. Life is messy, life is complicated, and they compress it into a wonderful two hours of joyful music and singing and dancing that everybody could enjoy today. And that's precisely what P.T. Barnum would have loved about it. He would have loved to see that people are still in theaters singing, you know, all of these great songs and keeping his memory alive. The show will go on. So there are some reasons why I love The Greatest Showman, especially the costumes. I could talk about just this movie in general forever, but maybe that'll be a video for a different day. I'll stop it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.